In this video, we're going to discuss the paradox of memory. This is going to be the first in a series of a few videos all about memory. In our next video, we'll discuss the structure of memory, how it all works, what different forms of memory we all have. In the video after, we'll talk about errors of memory, how we forget things, and why we make memory mistakes. So there's a lot of interesting stuff to discuss, but I'm going to start here with this idea of the paradox of memory, and I'm going to illustrate the paradox of memory via a demonstration. For this demonstration, all I want you to do, at least to start, is to listen. I'm going to read a list of words, and I want you to simply try to remember as many of the words as you can. So this is sort of a simple test of your memory ability. Now, after the uh, after I read all of these words, I want to I want you to basically pause the video and try and write down as many as you can. So get a piece of paper and a pencil, or maybe open up a note or a word document or a pages document on your computer, just somewhere where you can write down. Because again, we're trying to test ourselves here. But I'll give instructions more on that in just a minute. So if you're ready, I'll read the words. Sour. Honey, bitter, heart, tooth, nice, sugar, chocolate, taste, tart, candy, soda, good, cake, pie. All right. So at this point, I want you to pause the video and write down as many words as you can remember from the list. Okay, we're going to start again, so hopefully you had time to write down the list of words. If not, again, pause the video because I'm going to give some stuff away here and we're going to do some debriefing. All right, so I want to start by asking you to look at the list of words that you wrote down. And I want you to first see how many uh, words did you write down. So there were a total of 15 words that I read off. So great job if you got, you know, 10, 11, 12 of them. That's amazing. Don't worry if you didn't. Uh, but as a second sort of bit, I want you to look at your list of words and see if you wrote down the word sweet. Now, interestingly, sweet was not part of the list. I did not write down the word uh, sweet. Yet, 33% of people mistakenly write down the word sweet when we do this demonstration. Uh, I've done this in many classes, and I see about a third of people mistakenly write down the word sweet. But this has also been documented in published research where we've done this kind of a study. And again, people write down the word sweet. Why does this happen? We're misremembering, right? This is, again, I'll illustrate and just describe a little more in a minute uh, as how this fits into the paradox of memory. But why do we forget? Why do we make this mismemory information? Well, it's because a lot of the words that I read out kind of clustered around this theme of sweet. A lot of the words were about taste. I'll show you them right here so that you believe me that sweet was not part of this list. Sour, honey, bitter, heart, tooth, nice. Here's a lot of even more words related to sweet. Sugar, chocolate, taste, tart, candy, soda, good cake, pie, right? A lot of these have to do with sweet. And so when you're recalling trying to think back as much as possible to the words that I said, sweet tends to come up because it was a related theme that was sort of... Um, throughout, spread throughout all of these uh, words. And again, this is an illustration of the paradox of memory. The paradox of memory is simply the idea that memory, especially human memory, is amazing in some circumstances, but quite bad in others. Now, there's a lot of examples of amazing memory. Even without getting into the extreme examples, uh, even our just regular People's memories, right, are really impressive. Think about how much information you have about people you've met, about foods, about, you know, general knowledge about the world, um, just all of this stuff, procedural memory about how to do things, right, how to open a doorknob or drive a car or ride a bicycle. There's a lot of stuff packed into our brains. And in fact, it's been estimated the, that the amount of information we have, specifically in our long-term memory, we'll talk more about this in, a, in our next video, uh, the amount of information we have stored in our brains, how much we can remember, is estimated to be about 500 times the size of all of Wikipedia. So give yourself a pat on the back because that's a lot of information. But beyond just everyday memory, which is impressive enough, there are really amazing examples of superior memory out there. This, for example, is Kim Peek. 
You might not know the name Kim Peek, but you might know the name Rain Man. Kim Peek is the person who inspired the movie Rain Man, played by Dustin Hoffman. Kim Peek has an amazing memory. He can read two pages of a book in about 10 seconds. He'll have his left eye read everything on the left page, his right eye read everything on the right page, and he'll remember about 99% of what he read. You can ask Kim Peek anything. You can ask him history. He can quote scripture, biblical stuff. You can ask him, you know, you can tell him a date. You can say March 3rd, 1922, and he'll tell you, oh, it was a Wednesday. I don't know if it actually was, but he would. <laughs> he'll tell you, oh, it was a Wednesday. Here's exactly what was happening, all of that sort of stuff. So it's really amazing uh, and hard to explain how memory can be so good. This is Mary Lou Henner. She's an actress with what we call superior autobiographical memory. She remembers every day of her life, everything she wore, everything she ate, um, the major events that happened on different days. Again, she knows whether each day in a date that you can mention is a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or so on. Uh, really impressive things that we, you know, can't really do. So memory has the ability to be very amazing. And yet at the same time, we forget where we left our keys every day, right? So Memory can be amazing, but it also is very limited. It has lots of limitations. And especially when we get to um, the third video in this series of videos on memory, you're going to see that we make lots of memory errors. We're going to talk about how we make those uh, kinds of errors and why. So again, it's just a really interesting testament to this paradox of memory. Now, the reason, just to kind of foreshadow some of this, the reason that memory is amazing in some circumstances, but the reason we forget, the reason we have limitations in our memory is this key theme right here. Memory is reconstructive, not reproductive. This is to say memory isn't some sort of a video camera, like you experience something in the world, you take a recording of it, and then when it's time to remember that experience, you sort of play the recording, like a file on your computer. That's not how our brains work. That's not how memory works. Memory is not reproductive. We're not reproducing things that we experienced. Instead, we're reconstructing things from scratch. Now, thinking about the biology, behind memory. As we saw before, lots of different areas in the brain are devoted to memory. Now, think about when you see something, right? Uh, you're, you're watching somebody talk, for example. Different parts of the brain process different pieces of what you're seeing, right? We have the occipital lobe, as we discussed before. That processes your vision, what you're seeing literally. Uh, but even within the occipital lobe, different parts of your brain are designed to sort of process the color of what you're seeing, the shape of what you're seeing, the motion of what you're seeing, right? Um, the dimensionality, is it two-dimensional or three-dimensional? That's proce processed somewhere else. And think about also what you're hearing, okay? The words coming out of this person's mouth. Well, that's processed in an entirely different part of your brain. So your brain literally has this really amazing job, very difficult, challenging job of piecing together all the different components of the memory and turning it into something that feels like playing a video file from something you experienced before, but it's really not that way. So again, we'll get more into this, but keep this idea in mind as we learn more about how memory works. Memory is reconstructive, not reproductive.